So yeah, so here we, we are, um, we've been back in Australia since August for a bit of a break and then we head back to Cambodia in January. Um, August was cold. It was very, very cold. Um, I don't think it should, it should ever get that cold anywhere in the world. They should, like, I don't know. Australia seems to have laws about everything. <laughs> I don't know why they can't have a law about the temperature. <laughs> Does everyone know the story of Abraham? Yeah. Love the story of Abraham. I want to start early on in Abraham's life. So Abraham was pretty much just, just a guy. Actually, he was so old he could have come to your um, seniors. <laughs> could have come to your seniors Christmas party. But Ab so Abraham, but he's still living with his dad and his brothers and their families, and there's like multiple families all living in the one place. And God speaks to Abraham. And he said, so in chapter 12 of Genesis, and it says, the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, your father's household, to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham went. It's like, you read the story, and it's like almost hitting him, think. God says, go, and he says, okay. And he went. Now, this is what happened for us. If we didn't have to go through or jump through some hoops and stuff and raise some money, we would have done the same thing. 2010, end of 2010, uh, we, was, we were youth pastors at our, at our church, which is out in Windsor, and we, um, we took a team over to, Cambo to Thailand and to Cambodia, and our whole family came with us, and at the end of our two-week trip with our team, we got them on the, on the plane, waved goodbye, and we stayed. In Cambodia for another two weeks, just for a bit of a, a bit of a holiday, but also some time just to to pray as a family. And and it was that night that God spoke and said, "Okay, now you need to come. This is where you're going to live." And so we got back from Cambodia, went straight to our senior pastor. He he knew already, he'd been praying, he kind of knew what I was going to talk to him about. And, and so we went, we sold our house, sold most of our possessions, as much as we could sell in a, in a garage out. Then we moved into a, um, a granny flat at my parents' place, which was just a one, well it's kind of a two room granny flat, it's one big, one main room, not big, <laughs> one main room, and then there's like a shower and toilet area. and. So the six of us lived in that after we sold our house um, while we were trying to get the support together to be able to go. And then so from that little kind of shoebox of a house, we, we got up and we went. It's just like Abraham, it's like God says, okay, get up and go. And Abraham. And as we follow through that story of Abraham, he, he gets to the point where there's a promise about stars and sand. That, there's, that his descendants are going to outnumber the stars or outnumber the sand. And, and you go, that's huge. Have you ever tried to count the stars or the sand? Anyone? Have you tried? picked up a handful of sand and tried to count it. We don't try it because we know it's just ridiculous. You can't do it. You could, but you wouldn't get anything else done ever. <laughs> You'd die there on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Going one, two, three. And then you'd lose count. You'd have to go back to the start again, and you'd be there. It's like, so, he's gonna, God's just showing him that that's it, and like, he's, 
This is huge. He didn't even have a son on the first time that God said that. And then the next time, you know, God had just told him to sacrifice his son. And then he shows this pro promise of, hey, but he only had one son. And he was an old man. One son and he was an old man. Then we jump. If we jump in our, in our Bible right through to the New Testament, and Romans 4 talks about Abraham and that promise. And who does he say that promise is for? He says for us. For all of us who believe. All of us who believe, that's the same promise. And, and so I have up here, there's this map of Cambodia. And split up into all its different provinces and I've forgotten how many there are. Yeah. 25. In our first year, we, we're learning a lot. So we dive in, we're learning language, um, reading, writing, speaking, listening. Listening is hard, the hardest thing to do <laughs> than anything else, just listening. Because some people talk like this. <laughs> well, some people, they talk like it. <laughs> and you can't understand anything and you've got to try and you're working hard and because it's just you're learning a new language can you just move your hand <laughs> and so they so listening was hard but we're learning a lot and learning about culture and then as we're getting towards the end of our time as we're praying God spoke to us and he said a church in every village. Now there's 25 provinces and I have absolutely no idea how many villages. I think there's like over a thousand villages. And he spoke to us at the church in every village. God, okay, awesome, let's do it. No idea how we're going to do this, God, but let's do it. And so we were, in our first three years, the little pink bit down the kind of towards the bottom and it's a small pink bit. We were we were there and in the city, but from the city is like, how are we gonna get to every village? God and, and so we started just going on doing the things that God had put in our hearts to do and, and I, I was teaching some swimming to, to kids which really helped with my language learning. Uh, one day I was, I was there teaching and I had someone translating because we were only new and I wasn't very good yet. And the lady translating, about 15 minutes into my first class, she goes, oh, I think you'll be okay. I have some paperwork I need to do. <laughs> and she disappeared. And I was left there and I like, had to kind of work out how to, how to I learned new words. <laughs> it's great. And so I'm there, and we're teaching swimming, and then I started teaching swimming with another organization um, they, who rescued girls out of slavery, and, and there, up a little bit further from Phnom Penh, in that, is that it's kind of orange color, it's called Kapok Jam, it's a little bit north of where Phnom Penh is, and I started teaching there, and, and that, was, that was fantastic to see God really move, but it, through that connection, as we're praying um, about this church in every village, God brought about, a friend of ours got asked to head up the same organization that we'd be teaching the girls to swim. Um, a friend of ours got asked to take on a position there, running that program, and everything that they want to do, and they've asked us to actually come alongside them when they reintegrate girls back into their village, that we would go with them to share the gospel with the elders and the village chief and the people of influence in that village. And it's like God just went, okay, here's your door into the sand and the stars. Here's your door open in the sand and the stars. The thing is with both sand and stars, 
Has anyone ever seen stars while sitting in your living room? Unless you've got like a clear roof, you must be rich. Or, or poor. <laughs> <laughs> Give me both. Um, but you're not know, middle class uh, if you can see through your roof. And so you can't. You can't see it from the comfort of your lounge or the comfort of your bed. You can't see that you actually have to get up and go. And as God said to Abraham, okay, get up. And from your, from your home, from your family, from the place that's comfortable. And go to the place that I will show you. And so we started going to the place that God was showing us. And we, so we end up in Cambodia, but we're in Phnom Penh, and that's not the place that he was going to show us yet. We were just there. We're on our way. This kind of journey. And on the journey, you're learning new things. He's getting you ready for when you actually hit the ground where he wants you to be. The place that he's going to show you. But there's still the sand. Stars. Abraham's descendants are going to be seeing the stars. And he got told that when he had none. But as in that every promise of seeing the stars, and that promise is for us, like Paul says in Romans, that promise is for us today who believe. Every promise of seeing the stars starts with what? Starts with Isaac. Abraham had to start with Isaac. Abraham and Sarah had to start with Isaac. If there was no Isaac, it's not there. The promise doesn't get fulfilled. They had to start with Isaac. So I want to ask you a question that you can think about. What's your Isaac? Because God has promised something so huge, it's like sand and stars. It's promised something for all those who believe. The promise doesn't just all of a sudden come with everything all in one, one here. It starts with the one. And from that one, it starts to multiply. It starts to grow. Until it impacts everyone. As Abraham stepped out, <clears throat> and he stepped out into new, new communities, new people. Uh, so this is our, this is the beginning of our kind of sand and stuff. It's kind of like Cambodia is our Isaac. God's put some, something far bigger. This um, I share this. This boy, he was so scared. His first lesson. So just say he is the edge of the. You guys are. Um, so he stood, got dressed into his swimmers, and he stood back here. Everyone else is sitting on the edge, and he's standing here. And he wasn't going to come any closer. That's as close as he could bring himself to come. And and I, and I had to talk to him, talk to him, and convince him that it was good, and he'd kind of come a little bit closer. And then a little bit closer. It took maybe 10 minutes to actually get him to come just to the edge of the pool. And then we got him to this point where he would relax, get in the water, trust, and overcome, overcome his fear. And see, this is part of the part of the journey. You see this little thing, the swimming thing? That's not the standing stars. That's one of the things that God put as part of on the way to the land He was showing us. This is on the way, but on the way, you see, you see little snippets of what God's going to do, what God's going to use you for, setting people free from fear, giving them hope, courage. As you dive into into community, and I love community. Okay, this, this man here in the photo with me, I met him at the gym. Okay, in Cambodia, okay, I'm just gonna um, sidetrack for a little bit. The, the gym is awesome there, way better than here because it's affordable. 
You don't need to take a loan out to go to the gym. Okay, so for every session I go to the gym, it costs me about 60 cents. Who would like that? 60 cents a session, it's great. But anyway, so I met this man at the gym, um, and I met him, so before I became a youth pastor all these years ago, I, I was a personal trainer. And so um, I went to the gym and using my skill set, I noticed, because gyms are kind of new for the, um, the lower to middle class in Cambodia. Uh, and so they're in there, they want to get in there and do it, but they don't know how to use all the things. So um, he, um, he was using a machine and wasn't using it properly, so I jumped in and started just to show, showing how to use it so he didn't hurt himself. And we just started building this relationship. And as we built, as we built a relationship, he ended up, him and his family came to our place for Christmas. Um, he, he still claims to be, he says he's a Buddhist, but he trusts Jesus. So, um, which is awesome. He can keep doing that, <laughs> keep trusting Jesus. And, and he's always got loads and loads of questions, wanting to grow deeper in his understanding of Christ. Because his understanding of being a Buddhist is directly linked to him being Cambodian. It's nothing to do with anything else. It's just him being Cambodian. And so, but him and his family have been in our lives. But through him, I go and have coffee with him after the gym. And we sit around and it's amazing what God does when you just get up and go to the place he'll show you. The reason God says get up and go to the place I'll show you is because you can't see the stars when you're on your lounge. You can't see the sand. You can't, you can't scoop up sand. You can't connect to it. You can't feel it. You can't grab hold of what God's doing. You can't get out there and be a part of that what God's doing. Completely trust Him. Not just believe Him. Completely trust Him. Because He's got a promise for you. One promise you know, delivered to it doesn't work. You actually have to get up and move. You actually have to do something about it. You have to go after it. You have to go after it. But it's yours. It's yours for the taking. It's like God's placed it on the table, but not the coffee table right in front of you. It's placed on the table, and you have to actually get up and go after it. And sometimes it feels like, you know, at the airport where you've got the, um, the travelator thing, so you don't, so for the, the lazy people, so they don't have to walk. <laughs> or for the, the kids who want to have fun and see how fast they can run. Actually, who was an adult tries to see how fast they can move on those? <laughs> it's cool. But you go, you get on it, and sometimes going after the promise, it's like you're going the wrong way on that. And you're walking, and it's almost like you're on the same spot. Going the, you're going against against the flow, but, but you've actually got to go hard. Go hard after it. Completely trust God. If God says do something, just do it. Don't worry. Worry it takes up too much time, too much effort. And you'd be sad on yourself. So you go after it to claim it. To claim it. And as you go after the promise to claim it. Someone has to get birth. Isaac has to get birth. He has to get. He has to be born. And birthing is it's not a fun experience. Did Alan punch me <laughs> when one of the kids was being? I don't know who it was. I think it was, was it Joseph. Elijah. Uh, when Elijah was Elijah was being born, and Did Alan punched me in the arm. She thought she was punching me really hard, but I was wise and I did not laugh. <laughs> Because the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers. <laughs> and so I didn't laugh, even though it was very funny. 
that she had punched me with everything she had and but because why did she punch me but because it's not a fun experience I see it's a fun <laughs> you don't always go you don't go through things just because they're fun you go through because the end result it's what comes after that what comes after that? See, that whole process is not fun. Right? As you guys stand your feet and saw it, aren't they standing there? That's not fun. <laughs> Chris would be in pain. It's <laughs> cuticles. Is that what right? I don't know. <laughs> cuticles? On your toe? I don't know. I've got no idea. I'm just making things up now. Um, but there's pain, and there's there's time, and you're going, and you're just kind of like you're hanging there, you're waiting, you're wanting, you're wanting it to happen. And the same when you go out to the prophet promise, you're going through this stuff, and it's painful, it's long, it's hard. But the other side of it, there's the start of something great. The start of something incredible. Go off. Sometimes you don't see it. Well, you see a little bit of it. God gives you the start sometimes. The start of it. But then just because he gives you the, just the start of it, doesn't mean you don't keep going after it. You read, you read the book of Hebrews, and Hebrews chapter 11 goes through all the people. Abraham's mentioned in there, but all these other people. And what happened to them before they got to the, the fulfillment of the promise? Does anyone know what happened to them? They died. They died. They got a little bit of it. I mean, Moses got to stand on top of a hill promise was over there and he got to stand on the hill and look at the promise and then he died Abraham didn't get to see his family enter the promised land that Moses saw from a man he didn't get to see that but it all happened because of him getting up because he went Will you go? I mean, you guys have a heap of Christmas things coming up. I love Christmas. It's fantastic. I, I like I like the fact that some shops start doing their Christmas decorations in September. I think it's really cool. I think the only reason um, the Halloween stuff came to Australia because some people couldn't bear the thought of doing Christmas decorations before October. And so they said, we've got to put something else in here. We can't have Christmas carols playing. <laughs> playing in September or October. They, they're not trying to delay the effect, but everybody loves it. Everybody loves it. And if they don't love it, one day they will. Just got to persevere. Persevere with the love. And you'll get there, but Christmas, you have all of these Christmas things. And... You don't know what's going to happen within this Christmas thing because what, what's going to happen in there as you get up and go and you grab a hold of what, what God is going to do. Grab a hold of what God is going to do and something incredible will happen. There's loads of opportunity to step out. Step out from your comfort zone. Step out Look up so you can see the stars. Step out so you can walk onto the sand and see, be able to feel the sand. See what God will do as you just completely trust Him. Don't even try to hold on to anything for yourself. 
just completely trust him. If God says, give, give, he says, go, go. If you're in the shops and he says, pay for the person behind, pay for the person behind. Just trust him that he's got it covered. one story. This is a, a story that happened to us a little while ago about giving. So from when I, when I first got saved, I've always gone, on, okay, God, I've got nothing. It's all you. You've got everything. Because I knew, I knew how bad I was. I knew how worthless I was without him. And so I just said, okay, God, I'm going to completely trust you. Whatever you tell me to do, I will do it. It doesn't matter. And, and so there was one day, um, so we only had two children. I was working a job and I got made redundant. And we had some money in the bank, we were paying off a mortgage. Thank God that I don't have to do that anymore. But we're paying it off and we had money sitting there that was ready to be able to put onto the mortgage that month to pay for that. But sitting there praying one morning with no job so no income and God says I want you to give that money that you have for the mortgage and so I said okay and I got the money and I gave it in an offering at a church and just completely trusted him and we had nothing Nothing, absolutely nothing. And he came through every moment. As a bill came in, we would go out to our letterbox, pull out a bill, and there'd be just a blank envelope, like so not posted, someone had dropped it off with their names on it, we'd open it up, and the money in the envelope would be the amount for the bill. And, and he would continually do those things. And we paid, we kept paying our mortgage. And it was like three months while I was trying to get a job. And we kept paying, no money coming in, but there was always something there. We completely trust him. Because it's his anyway. And he owns everything. Even the things that other people think they own, it's actually God's. something God wants to do that's so incredible. 